Okay. Great. All right, uh, we'll call the meeting to order. If I could have your attention. This will be a virtual meeting of the Marinwood Community Service District Park and Recreation Commission. There will not be a public location for participating in this meeting. Any interested member of the public can participate telephonically or via internet by utilizing the web link or dial-in information printed on this agenda. At points in the meeting, when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected by a telephone, please dial star nine. All public comments shall be addressed to the commission and limited to three minutes per speaker. The commission may choose to respond to comments or request staff to respond at the conclusion of the respective public comment period. Um, as we move to our agenda, item number one, the agenda itself, are there any uh, edits or revisions from commissioners? Uh, hearing none, we will adopt our agenda as presented. Uh, we'll move on to item number two. This is public comment on non-agenda items. Anyone from the public? Yeah, one second. Sorry. Um, apologies. All right, one second. Here you go. Stephen. Good evening, Stephen. Yes, good evening. So, actually, uh, I have comment uh, for uh, public comments as well as the agenda. Um, in tonight's agenda, we're not, uh, the, the board had requested that uh, tonight's agenda uh, include a discussion of the, the park's bathroom, which was not on there. Um, several other items came up. Um, I guess after the agenda was published, but certainly it was a big issue. And that has to do with uh, uh, the incident at the, at the horseshoe pit the other night. And that's also not being discussed. And then third, um, I had written uh, Luke I, for a period of about a month, I've been making requests of uh, Luke to see if I could get my uh, group to, um, uh, utilize some of the empty classrooms during the winter months for my music uh, groups. It's a nonprofit free to the public uh, uh, thing. And uh, that was also a, a policy type question that's not being addressed. You know, uh, members of the board, uh, or, or the Park and Rec Commission, I don't believe are really getting adequate reporting on what's happening at the regular meetings. It's very frustrating that only selective information gets to you. I can see it because I attend both meetings. Um, and I think that your time is valuable. Your contribution is important. And I do think uh, the reason why you must be on this board is to make a positive contribution to the community. And that's being hampered uh, because of the lack of information that you're uh, getting. So that is as far as the agenda goes, I will now continue with my public comments. And uh, the public com, uh, well, the other issues are very important to me, but um, the recent incident that happened in the parks, um, there was a basically the Friday night, uh, frat party in the park and um it was louder than normal um and uh, lasted till after dark and clearly violated not only the laws of marin county but also our ordinances and you know just common courtesy and decency um the neighbors went out 
the address the, the crowd. Uh, one of our board members was there uh, who basically kind of uh, slipped away during the, the confrontation and, or, or the, the, yeah, it was a confrontation. And um, the woman uh, who was discussing it with, with them uh, was called the C word and treated extremely rudely, which naturally as any husband uh, uh, hearing that kind of abuse to his wife, he was livid and he had a conversation with Chris. Anyhow, it's being discussed, uh, but uh, my dearest hope is that we can continue um, good positive activities in the park and eliminate alcohol use as is in our bylaws and as in the laws of Marin County and virtually every park that I know of. They don't allow drinking like we allow drinking. So, and smoking and, you know, using the, the, the woods as a urinal and what have you. Um, it's a problem that needs to be addressed and should be discussed. So that's it. Um, looking forward to tonight's meeting. Thanks. Okay. Move on to item number three. This is the draft minutes of our August 23rd uh, commission meeting. We're looking to approve these minutes. They are in your packet. Uh, any comments from commissioners regarding the uh, draft minutes? I'd make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a Campo a motion to approve. Can I have a second? Second. Uh, second from Fine. Uh, call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Looks like our motion carries unanimously. <coughs> uh, we will then carry on to item number four. This is the draft minutes of the September 13th board meeting. This is something just for Oh, excuse me, let me back up a minute. Uh, any public comment on the uh, draft minutes for our commission meeting? No, no hands raised. Okay, excuse me. Uh, item number four, the draft minutes for the September 13th board meeting. This is something just for our review. Again, it is in your packet. Uh, comments from commissioners. Um, yeah, John, I had a question about item I, a uh, request for future agenda items. The um, looks like Kathleen requested a discussion on community center rentals. Was was that talked about at all in that meeting, or was that that's just for for the future? Well, luckily she's here tonight, so yep. she can answer yep. that. It's just for the future. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then. It looked like Chris had asked for the to talk about additional public restrooms and placement of tables. I think I saw the placement of tables on the agenda. I didn't see the restrooms. Is that just we'll get to it in a future meeting? Is that I know we talked about it a little bit in our last meeting too. Yeah, and, and I, we communicated with uh, Chris and just let him know that staff hasn't had any opportunity to research this whatsoever and uh, just simply doesn't have information to bring to you at this point in time. Sounds good. Any other comments? Okay, I'll ask for uh, comments from the public then. Sure. I'm sorry, John. I, oh, I just just nice. looking, Eric. When does when do we start receiving Measure A tax monies? Uh, I believe not until like next year. They don't even start collecting them until October. Right. Um, so the first receipts from these aren't going to happen until like of, uh, of uh, you know, the next fiscal year. So I, I would think July because, you, you know, they start collecting them. And then by the time they allocate them, uh, I think we've already received whatever we're going to receive for this fiscal year, which was basically the close off uh, through last April. And then there was basically a dead period where this quarter cent sales tax wasn't collected from April until coming up here. I believe October 1st is when they start collecting it again. 
And is, have have you received any estimates on what that amount would be? Uh, from what I understand, that it's greater than previously. Yeah, um, yeah, and I have something that I had put in the board packet. Um, that was all part of the thing. Let me see if I oh, can. Oh, is it in there? Yeah, it's Sorry. in the board. It's in the entire board packet. Um, and if I'm looking at it, I mean, they are estimating um, a total of uh, 16 million annually that gets pulled from this. Obviously, as you know, 60% stays with the uh, county. Um, God, don't quote me on this because I'm trying to look through a large packet here. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I want to say 20% is allocated to uh, cities, towns, and special districts, uh, kind of uh, based on populations. Uh, and then to answer your question, to make a long story short, the estimate at this point in time for Marinwood is around 115,000 annual, um, which is an increase. These are based off of updated census numbers. Um, our census numbers and all the populations have changed. So they're based on total populations of all special districts serving unincorporated parts of Marin County. Uh, applicable special districts, meaning they have park and rec functions. Um, and we represent about 23.86% of that total population, which is 26,000 people total in change. Great. Thank, thanks, Eric. Yep. Nothing else, then I'll go back to uh, public comment on the uh, review of the uh, September 13th board meeting. Uh, yeah, one second. Stephen. So one one of the impor important can you can you hear me? I, mm -hmm. Am I active? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the uh, things that uh, seldom uh, gets reported is any kind of detail in uh, these reports. One of the concerns I had with in particular of measure A, I think is particularly relevant to this committee. Um, the indication of how that money would be spent uh, by Eric really did not cover what measure A initially was uh, slated to do, which is basically to provide access and uh, mm -hmm. habitat at, uh, restoration. Um, I think, I, and I had specifically requested that it be written, but like many things, uh, you know, it's like talking to a, uh, a, a blank wall. Uh, there's, there's absolutely no kind of um, uh, acknowledgement of the responsibility to take care of our environment and also to address the needs of um, our uh, uh, mobility impaired people. Um, there was no mention of the bathroom again, which obviously could be a measure A improvement. I believe we're the only community that still uses porta potties in our popular parks. Um, it's kind of disgusting considering the value of our homes that we don't have take greater pride. I have a feeling that that might be due to our staff not, in, not wanting to deal with bathrooms, but I believe we're currently um, uh, not following uh, health uh, guidelines by excluding it, especially since we have a park with several hundred kids. We, we have some big events and we do not have enough facilities for the public. Um, anyhow, I wanted to make sure that you saw that uh, because that was discussed and it should be discussed here. Thank you. All right, we'll now move on to... Uh... Um, hey, John, if you don't mind, I can clarify a little bit here really quick. Um, sure, the yeah, action on the table was simply to enter into the agreement to receive the funds. It wasn't talking about what 
will happen with these funds. The staff report actually took word for word what the intention of the funds was from the ordinance uh, and the ballot measure that was passed, which basically said maintain, maintain, restore, and or renovate existing parks, preserves, and recreational facilities to construct new parks and recreational facilities or acquire park lands or to engage in vegetation management to reduce wildfire risk, promote biodiversity, or control invasive non-native weeds on private municipal or district lands. Uh, point being, though, the purpose of that agenda item was not to discuss how to spend Measure A. It was simply authorizing the district to enter into the agreement to participate in uh, Measure A funding. Thank you. Yes, understood. Thanks for the clarification, Eric. That's pretty broad. Yeah, no problem. Okay, now we'll move on to item number five. This is a potential amendment to the Park and Rec Creation Commission bylaws, uh, interest in revising our regular meeting schedule from monthly to bi-monthly. Um, I would just open it up to comments from commissioners. Anyone interested in doing this? Um, well, sure, I'll, I'll jump in. I mean, this was, I think I brought this up a couple of times and um, I, I think to me, this makes sense. I'm curious what other commissioners think. And as I mentioned last time we met, you know, the, the county parks and open space commission, which I attend most of those meetings meet every other month. Um, it's not uncommon for parks commission meetings to be every other month. So this, this makes sense to me. I agree. I think it makes sense. I think John um, Campbell made the, the observation in the last one that part of what takes up so much time in these meetings is just the mechanics of the motions and the agendas and the whatever. And so um, uh, it just feels a little inefficient. Um, as this report notes, like we could still hold special meetings um, if we got really busy with the playground rebuild, you know, replacement or something like that, like we can still hold uh, um, an extra meeting in between the odd months, um, if need be. So um, I agree with Campo, I think this makes sense. Okay. Michael or Ann? Yeah, just one thought is that I wonder if we would meet for a little bit longer if we're only meeting every other month. That might be an interesting, just to make sure that we can cover everything that we want to cover. I guess, I I, that, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. I would think that could be likely, but I think that, uh, you know, it would still be less time than it would be we probably spent on two meetings. So I think there would be, you know, a, a time savings there. I think, um, you know, with the um, inclusion of uh, the ability of the chairperson or three members of the commission or the board itself to request a special meeting on these even months that uh, if we do get into a, a period where there is a need for us to discuss something, then I, I think that, you know, it's, it's no problem to call that special meeting. So I, I have no, you know, I, I have no problems with uh, going to buy monthly. I think, when you look back at our year, we had a fairly light year as far as, you know, things that we needed to move on or, or, or you know, things like that. I, I think certainly we could have done that uh, every other month. So I, I have no problem, uh, you know, giving it a try as well. Uh, can I add on a little bit? Uh, John, first, I guess my initial thought in listening to Anne's comment was uh, was just wondering if that if having a meeting that ran a little bit longer would be a hardship on commissioners. Um, if instead of an hour, you're, we're meeting for an hour and a half or so um, would be my first question. So I'd be very curious personally just to kind of hear that response. And then secondarily, I also think, you know, at the end of these um bi-monthly meetings, you know, you do have an opportunity right then and there to say, hey, I think, you know, rather than 
coordinating and say, you know, between and saying, hey, we should have another meeting. You know, you could end a meeting saying, you know, with the commissioner bringing the request that I think we should continue this topic next month and not wait two months to keep talking about this. So I think, and a lot of times you could plan those inner inner month meetings at the, you know, in conjunction with the regular meeting that you're already having. Um, and it's still, you know, to John's point that he was making, if things come up, uh, you know, at a staff level that need, you know, there's nothing preventing staff from reaching out to whoever the chair might be for the commission um, and saying, hey, you know, we think that we should have a meeting this month, even though it's not a regular meeting month. Uh, do you, you know, do you mind if we poll the commission to check for availability and uh, an interest in in having that? So I think there's multiple avenues to have that. But again, I, I am curious to hear if uh, you know having later meetings that could run later into the evening does you know present a hardship on because uh, I, I do agree that that could be possible I think it might ultimately lead to less time in a meeting format um, but they could be longer individual meetings that might you know run till nine o'clock nine thirty at night on certain occasions uh, uh, nine thirty might be pushing it but could run as late as nine o'clock at night so I don't know if that's a hardship on the commissioners That wouldn't be a problem for me personally, but I, I guess I would echo Ian's point that was kind of reiterating what I made a point last time, which was the the mechanics of it. I mean, I think there's a lot of truth to that. We just to review draft minutes, board minutes, and just go through these functions. It's still going to take time. If if we even if we did tack on a a half hour to an every other month meeting, that wouldn't be a hardship for me. And, and again, this is how the county does it, which has, I feel, more going on, more business to conduct than our small little CSD does. And every other month seems to work fine for them. That meeting is about two hours at a pop. And I, I go to most of those meetings um, and it seems to work fine. And any comment as far as, because it's an item you kind of mentioned as far as the length of the meeting? Yeah, you know, I guess I just brought it up for discussion. I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable either way if we want to try an hour and if it feels too short, you know, then if we find that we're cutting agenda items because we, we won't have enough time, then that might be an indicator that we should, you know, try for 90 minutes, but we can give it a shot for an hour and see if we feel like we're, we're getting through everything. I mean, I'm, I'm open either way. I could do a 90 minute meeting or I could do an hour meeting. Um, but as these stand now, they don't have a duration, right? Correct. Like it doesn't end at a certain point, just when we're done talking. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> right, yeah. You know, some of our meetings now can run close to an hour and a half, but it's just through conversation, extended conversation. I think, um, you know, it's, I, I think it's something doable. The board of directors probably has their own opinion on it, but uh, I, it's, it seems to me that it, the consensus is basically we're willing to try it. Can I ask a question, Eric, or everybody? Is the intent to keep it on even months or odd months, or does it? matter what was your we would we would do odd months because we normally don't meet in december so that would be one of the months that we would have off anyway so it would so be we, the same as fire I have, uh, fire, fire is there. actually on even months um but from a staffing perspective it would actually work out good because then you would wind up with kind of three month three meetings in a row so because this is at the end of the month it would be at the end of the odd month within fire going at the beginning of the even month and then okay. the next week you would wind up having board so you'd have two of these right before both commissions would meet right before a board meeting instead of one commission before one board meeting and one commission before another board meeting and then the following board meeting you wouldn't actually have any uh, commission meeting reports assuming they don't meet it seems to streamline it a little then. It, the, the thought didn't escape me. If it works for you guys and it works for staff, then great. 
Yeah, well, I'm not, I, I, I personally, I'm with my thing that, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily have a opinion about it. I think it's really up to the commissioners on their opinion and then ultimately up to the approval of the board. Uh, uh, I can go either direction. I certainly agree with a lot of the points that John uh, Campo made. And I think that it can be accomplished meeting every other month. And I think when needed, it's very easy to have a meeting on the, in, in this case, on the even months too, um, you know, pending availability uh, to field a quorum. All right, which we've never really had, you know, and especially now that we have five commissioners, we haven't had a, a huge problem just being able to feel the quorum lately either. So, uh, and, you know, the other thing I would bring up is it, it might make it a more appealing volunteer opportunity for potential commissioners if, hey, you know, we meet six times a year as opposed to, you know, every fourth Tuesday. Um, you know, and I'd be forthright when I say that commissioners aren't, you know, people aren't banging down the door to volunteer their time on a Tuesday evening to, join on the commission for various reasons. Uh, there's a lot of recruitment effort and and personal recruitment efforts that go into getting new commissioners as well as keeping the commissioners that we have and keeping them engaged and, and reaching out personally and asking them to please stay on the commission and continue to contribute. And just one point that wasn't mentioned, it would save the district some money. I mean, your time and Luke's time. I'm assuming uh, assuming this isn't volunteer work for you. No, but we're both on salary too. So uh, uh, unfortunately, okay. I don't unfortunately I don't qualify for overtime, uh, okay. and, I, and neither does Luke. Uh, okay. Believe me, I, I, I certainly wish that were the case. I think both of our salaries would double overnight. But uh, but is this uh, not the type of situation where you flex your schedule? Like you might start later in the day because you know you're working late. Uh, later we always we always work in that in such a way. You know, I mean. Uh, some weeks you can get done in 40 hours, some weeks take 50. And if, uh, you know, you have a six hour day here because you have other personal commitments, uh, God knows you have a 10 hour day coming up your way uh, real soon anyway. So I, I, I'm not a huge clock watcher. We don't, you know, clock in at eight, clock out at five. We have hourly employees who we ask that of, but for our salaried and managerial staff, uh, I don't have that kind of an expectation as long as the job is getting done and the people who need the support are getting the support <clears throat> they need. Right. I just wanted to say that I'm I'm good with going to every other month as well. Um, if we wanted to like get you know updates from staff like in between, like could that be something that is done via email or would it have to be like posted like as a public like item? Um, like, you are as a member of the you, you're welcome, Michael, to reach out at any point in time if you have questions about specific things, you know, sending me an email, sending Luke an email, popping by, um, all of that is perfectly fine. And then, um, you know, also uh, on the off months, if you know, just tuning into the board meetings and seeing what is happening at those as well. Um, can be educational too, or even just going through, because uh, I always include the PNR commission on the agenda announcements, just, you know, going through those agendas for the board meetings and seeing what is on there as opposed to just waiting for the minutes um, is why, you know, the commissions, both commissions are always included on those as well. And you can always go back and watch board meetings too. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, no, I encourage you, if you ever have questions, you know how to find us. That's good. Yeah, and I do like that. Um, it Kind of frees up our time to be it's it'll be easier to sit in on board meetings because we'll have fewer meetings to to watch and participate in well maybe before we discuss motions or anything i'll, I'll, I'll get some public comment and then we can come back and see where we want to move sure one second john Stephen. Uh, yes, I would suggest that if an hour a month is too much for anyone, that they resign effective immediately, because what your your contribution is minimal at best right now. I told you we're, there is an issue with communication. What going to every other month means is the public will not have the ability to, to uh, express and discuss issues in the community as well 
as uh, there's just going to be stuff happening um, uh, off the books. I suspect when I brought up those subjects at the beginning of the meeting that some of you had heard about those issues. And, you know, we have a problem with transparency in this community. We have a problem with, uh, quite frankly, with um, uh, people serving who, who are just, you know, basically sitting and, and approving whatever goes through the, 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 the agenda for the evening and not really asking tough questions, not presenting ideas, not really uh, putting their all into making our community a better place. And uh, honestly, an hour a month, that's too much, guys. Come on. Now, maybe an hour and a half every other month you want to go to. I would suggest that if we do this, that this board be, be uh, eliminated and the, uh, the, just the CSD board uh, carries all responsibilities because your contribution will be so minimal it really won't be worth your time and it certainly won't be worth the community's time. Um, as far as recruitment goes, part of the problem is uh, you don't want to publicize the meetings. You don't want to bring people into the discussion. And I guess maybe that's the appeal of these commissions. You feel like you're an insider, but I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I, I have a very different perspective. You're not insiders. You're, you're facilitating basically uh, uh, a situation where the we're not getting stuff done in the community you you guys approved the most expensive maintenance facility in the history of marin county and you can't even discuss bathrooms for our the public to to use in our park you know quite frankly i i you know i wouldn't feel good uh, about being part of this commission if if I wasn't doing anything and I don't blame you for not wanting to be in these meetings. Anyhow, I guess that's I guess I had a lot of thoughts there, but um uh, kind of frustrated. I want to hear from you. Thanks. All right. So we're uh I think the consensus is that we will look to uh, create a motion to the board uh, to notify the board that we would like to move to bi-monthly meetings with the conditions of the uh, ability to allow special meetings when needed. I'll make a motion to approve. I don't know if, if all that's into the motion or enough or not. But, um, I, I think you got it. I mean, the staff recommendation, uh, not recommendation, but the potential action that I put in here was just to approve and recommend to the board of directors for final approval, the proposed park and recreation commission bylaws amendment as presented. All right, so we have that motion from Commissioner Campo. I second. A second from Commissioner Fine. We we'll call for a vote, all in favor. I see eyes, any nays? Again, we have a, uh, uh, carries unanimously. So we will uh, notify the board of our uh, intentions. Next, we will move on to item number six. This is the Miller Creek Trail Initiative, a uh, potential planning and research process. This is an item for our discussion. Again, in your uh, packet, there is a staff report from Eric. Uh, I don't know if you want to pick us up on that, Eric. It looks like uh, some of the issues are completed and we're uh, working now to identify and receive cost estimates. Yeah, I can give a little bit of a background on this uh, briefly here. Um, you know, as we're going through this, I just wanted it to be very clear and, you know, based on some kind of questions and thoughts I had had, uh, you know, from, from various people, uh, just making it very clear where this particular project stood at this point in time. And I wouldn't even necessarily call it a project right now. I think it's still an initiative. I think it's still in the exploratory phase. And that was the one thing I wanted to make very clear. Um, you know, the board has certainly supported this initiative up until this point where we are, uh, just in terms of, 
learning what we've learned so far, getting some of the thoughts down that we've gotten down so far. You can see the kind of items one, two, and three um, that I've kind of outlined as what I think are the exploratory steps um, before we move forward. Uh, item one is, you know, was identifying the project scope and receiving a qualified estimate for current construction costs that was completed uh, through the work by uh, Tim Best, also uh, with help from John Campo. Um, and then, you know, two is establishing a formal agreement with the developer of the proposed senior living center regarding their financial contribution obligation. Um, they have been provided a, a formal agreement that was drafted up by our legal counsel in regards to um, financial contribution. That's what we have discussed in the past, uh, which was also put together by Tim Best, who um, did a secondary estimate for us based on the description that was included in the original 2006 subdivision improvement agreement on what it would cost current day to build those trails. Um, the developer was accepting uh, verbally of that. I, I wanted to have something in writing on it. Um, legal took a little bit longer than I would have hoped to get that done. Um, which is not that big of a deal because we're still a ways away from being able to break any level of ground on this anyway, uh, but it is in the developer's hands, so I'm waiting for their feedback, and if they are okay with it, then I will put it um, to the board to formally authorize to enter into this agreement. And then step three, and I actually, um, I reached out to John Campo prior to this meeting uh, and asked if he could help uh, um, his knowledge base on this is certainly greater than mine uh, and his experience in actually doing this um, dwarfs mine uh, when it comes to trail planning and management. Um, but there are, you know, beyond just that, there are other aspects of research that need to happen here, um, you know, from various studies that need to take place to, you know, public outreach to learning what the cost of various things are. Um, so I was actually hoping, um, and none of this has begun yet, I was hoping uh, John Campo uh, could oblige and just speak a little bit to this um, based on his knowledge and experience and, and um, avenues that they have taken on some of the trails that he's built in, in, in his professional life. And so, John, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Um, so as you mentioned, Eric, we have the Tim Best report, and that, that was a great report. Um, he did a great job and thorough and provided us a lot of information that will help inform future aspects of the planning. So I'll just kind of go through some of the steps the way I see it. Um, biological assessments. So we would do a vegetation and wildlife assessment along the trail corridor. And the intent would be to ensure that there were no sensitive species that would be impacted by the proposed project. Um, if there were sensitive species that would be impacted, that would change the level of the environmental review. Um, you know, my understanding of the site um, is that the, we would not be impacting any sensitive species. With that said, we can't make that assumption. We would have to still um, engage with biological assessments. Um, we would also have to do cultural assessments. Um, we know there's middens not too far away. Um, so we would need to in ensure that we weren't impacting any cultural artifacts as part of the proposed project. Um, those two assessments, the biological and the cultural, would then feed into and inform the environmental review. So for the maintenance facility, Eric, um, did you do an initial study? We did. Yeah. It, uh, that resulted in a mitigated negative declaration. Right. And so Based on our findings from the wildlife, uh, the biological and the cultural assessments, this could end up as a categorical exemption, which is a, a, a different level of environmental review, which we could do in house. Um, again, that's a lot of this is speculation and assumption. We wouldn't make these determinations until we did all the assessments to know for sure. Um, the Tim Bass report would be the quote unquote project description that we that would inform the categorical exemption. And then as far as some of the permitting goes, we would need a county grading permit. Um, that is not a huge lift. Um, more importantly, we would not need uh, regulatory agency permitting. So if the proposed project, proposed trail had interfaced with Miller Creek, say it crossed Miller Creek, 
um, then we would be on the hook for regulatory permitting with um, departments, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and possibly the State Water Board as well. Um, because the proposal as it's described would not interface with the creek or even the bed and bank, we would not need regulatory permitting. That's that's great. Um, it's much cleaner, simpler, um, cheaper, and that process can take about a year. So those are some of the steps as I see. Um, and that's somewhat in chronological order too. We would start with the biological and cultural, assuming we were to move forward. And then that would lead into the environmental review. John, you and I had talked about um, just some of the timing needed for that, like the vegetation assessment uh, would obviously not be able to happen until the spring when things are flowering. Can you speak a little bit to some of that as well? Yeah, so for the for the vegetation assessment, you need a full bloom period. So that would start in the spring. And it depends on the habitat type. Probably we would wanna begin around April. Like we would wanna have um, consultants in the field doing those assessments in April, and that would likely go into the summer. Wildlife can happen pretty much any time, so there's, it's, that's more flexible there. Cultural assessment as well. It's really just a vegetative assessment that is pretty time specific. So if we were, if we were hoping to, you know, advance this project sooner than later, we would want to have <laughs> contracts in place to start vegetation assessments this coming spring. Right. And then I am trying to recall, I mean, when we did all this for the uh, maintenance facility, um, the vegetation and the wildlife assessment were um, both done by the same person as part of the same report, I believe. And don't quote me on this. I don't have the number in front of me. Um, it wasn't more than a few thousand dollars to have that done. Um, the uh, Go ahead. Yeah. Tom. And that was Pernusky Chatham that did it. Correct. And so, I mean, this is a kind of a curious question. I, I'm not sure, like I, I know folks that do these assessments, um, like what are, what are the requirements for you to hire like a vendor that they, they don't have, like do they need in, to be authorized with the Marinwood to, no, 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 I can direct deal as long as they're qualified to um, produce the report. Uh, so, so, you know, this isn't a bidding situation for yeah, that. Uh, yeah. You know, this is all pre-project planning. This is, you know, the use of consultants. This isn't part of a larger bid. Uh, so we could gather, you know, multiple estimates, uh, cost estimates, timing estimates from multiple um, consultants to do this, uh, which is what we would do. Um, and then, you know, the culture assessment, there's only a couple of people uh, really that kind of do that work. Um, the person we worked with for the uh, maintenance facility was very thorough. I would start with him. That was, you know, significantly cheaper than the biological assessment was. Um, I want to say, you know, that was a, a couple thousand dollars. Um, and this person who we worked with was actually incredibly familiar with this area. He was um, one of the research interns uh, um, who uh, documented the uh, midden that's in the very near vicinity. Uh, he, he knows the area well. He knows exactly where to find the information. Um, and that, I want to think, was probably less than $2,000 for his part of the work. So, uh, you know, highball estimate, all of these types of reports, you could be looking, you know, four to $5,000 maybe total um, for the work. And then to... Um, John's point, you know, depending on what comes out of that could lead to additional work or additional study or additional um, need for mitigation. <laughs> um, I don't know how likely it is given where this exact area is. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but uh, <laughs> you just have to kind of take it from there. Other comments from commissioners? The appreciate the update. Appreciate the work you guys are putting into it. Thanks to John Campo for all that. And yeah, especially if we go by bi monthly, I think it would be nice to just like this and the playground and like those kinds of things, just get little quick updates on them bi monthly would be nice. So appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we'll have, uh, we'll definitely be talking a lot more on the playground here uh, very shortly. 
Um, so that's a whole different topic. But uh, uh, so my, just to be very clear on what you know, my goal is is you know once we establish this formal agreement. Uh, with the developer and then I would work on those cost estimates um, and timing and all this would get summed up into you know one agenda item for the board <laughs> to be placed on their agenda uh, where ultimately I'd kind of be looking for the go no go you know here's where we are here's the uh, what we have in a written agreement you know legally binding agreement with the developer towards their contribution here is the additional uh, planning and research steps and costs and timing involved with this project um, and I'd be looking for the board to say if they want to move forward with this, if they want to, uh, if they want to go ahead uh, and authorize staff to, you know, engage in those, or if they don't want to move forward at that point, you know, <laughs> the project's dead. Eric, last uh, last week we, or last month we talked a little bit about um, about. Um, the commitment from the developer and uh, just inflationary pressure. And I'm just wondering how that turned out. How, I mean, how are you thinking about that in terms of how long it might take to get this project completed and how costs might change over the, over the project? And is there, you know, any protection from that in terms of the contribution from the developer, maybe like as a percentage of project, or do we have to just take the, you know, the kind of, written dollar amount and then we just are at risk for inflation in terms of rising costs and um, how is that being handled uh well that's a good question Anne, and it's kind of multifaceted there actually is language that was inserted into the uh into the binding agreement addressing this and i believe that the date we had because so there's a couple of things that are at play um in accordance with the 2006 agreement um, trail construction is not to begin until they are at the point where they are constructing the bridge and the roadway that's going to lead to the senior facility. Uh, I think once he has done that part, then they have basically fulfilled what they need to fulfill to allow the district to move forward. If it is after, and I want to say, I think we either said like June 1st or June 30th of next year on that, because they're not going to be able to start that work until next April anyway, because of the uh, uh, you, you can't do that kind of work after October 15th. Uh, and if they haven't already, if they're not already almost done, then it ain't happening this year is just the reality of the situation. Um, and then otherwise, you know, if he, if they have completed that and, and their obligations are ready to go, then, you know, it's really on the district to be ready to move on the other end of it. So if it takes us a lot longer to get done, that's not necessarily an obligation of the, or a problem of the developer. Um, they've met their obligation in terms of, well, the road and the bridge is done. Now, if the road and bridge isn't done, then we have <coughs> language in this agreement that states we will uh, receive an updated cost estimate for construction at, at that point in time. <coughs> Excuse me, if that makes sense. Sorry, I'm kind of dying over here. Yeah. Eric, can I just clarify? Um, so it sounds like the expectation is they would have that bridge completed in the 2022 calendar year at some point? Uh, I can't speak to that per se. That's the expectation that we put into the agreement. Uh, I don't know exactly where they stand on getting that part done. Obviously, it's a project that really has nothing to do with us. We have no jurisdiction over that project whatsoever. Um, when I had talked to them several months ago, they were really hoping to get it done this fall prior to October. Obviously, for whatever reason, that hasn't happened. And just knowing how the process works and knowing that you can't build, I think it's, you know, basically uh, October 15th to April 15th, uh, uh, in a waterway, like, you know, with what they're trying to do, the county just simply won't allow it. The water boards won't allow it. Uh, it's too much disturbance to what is a much more active water area at that point in time for their work. They're going to be put off till spring. So the expectation that we put into the agreement was by the time they're allowed to do that construction legally, they'll be prepared to do it. And if it's not completed by June 30th, that uh, or underway by June 30th, then we reserve the right to obtain a new cost estimate. Okay, and, and just to be clear, if we're shovel ready, but the bridge isn't done, we cannot move forward. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And that would trigger the, on their part, we're going to revisit the construction cost estimate um, 
to recalculate what your contribution is going to be. Yeah. But I think if they have met their obligations and say it takes us another year to get there, that really isn't at the fault of the developer in any way, shape or form. That's kind of why we're moving forward now. But, you know, kind of talking about the timing on some of these other studies, um, it puts us in good time to get this vegetational wildlife assessment done during the blooming season, which would be next spring. Um, so assuming that they can be have their work done. I have no idea, to be honest with you. I can't tell you how long that's going to take. It doesn't say it has to be completed. It says we'll coincide with the construction of the bridge and roadway. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. You, can you clarify that? So say yes. that again? It doesn't need to be, their bridge and roadway doesn't need to be completed. The construction of that needs to have begun. Like they need to have broken ground on that. Oh. Um, for us to break ground. Oh, I don't know how long that type of a project would take. I know that he's working with monster contractors, you know, the gelatis of the world. Uh, I got to believe that they can build a little bridge over that thing and a roadway out to where that's going to go relatively quickly. Um, you know, they're not hamstrung by uh, government public work process. Uh, you know, I think once they can finally get all their permitting done and finalized and approved, uh, they can probably move very, very fast. Well, that's that's the thing. It's the permitting. I mean, that's right. a steelhead creek. So oh, yeah, I, they're they're definitely going to be bound to when they can do it 100%. and when they can't do it. Yeah, and they've been working on it for a very long time. Yeah, and I know that they still don't have permitting uh, in place yet for it. Yeah, and that that can be a the big X factor. Like 100%. that's out out of their hands. Yeah. Right. Yep. But that was why we put this other thing into it of, uh, hey, great, we know what it costs today. I don't know what it's going to cost a year from now. Right. And the way that, you know, cost of labor and materials and this project's mostly labor, uh, you know, that uh, I think we put a realistic timeline on there uh, while still being an understanding timeline of saying, look, if by June 30th, you haven't met your obligation on this part, we're going to revisit the cost because the cost is going to go up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anything else from commissioners? Then again, I would ask for public comment on the uh, potential planning and research process for the Miller Creek Trail initiative. Yeah, one second. Stephen. Uh, yes, this report um, and the uh, our experience with re recent construction projects really uh, shows that we have a lack of uh, a boots on the ground, a pragmatic uh, manager uh, in charge of, of these projects. Now, I, I'm not casting shade on our uh, managers, but they simply do not have any kind of expertise in this area. And as a result, our projects have been enormously expensive and behind schedule. For example, uh, the ma maintenance uh, shed project, the, the uh, uh, defense, uh, we had one contractor and it was, uh, the, we had one contractor, one bid. And so we took that bid and we're now paying more money per foot than the president of the United States or, or the United States is to build uh, a fence around President Biden's house. It's actually unbelievably expensive. And if you talk to people walking their dogs and- Stephen, I'm gonna ask you to focus on the agenda item we're discussing. I, I, uh, that you can ask anything that you want, but I am focusing on the, the agenda item and I will reclaim my time. We do not have the means or the expertise to pursue any construction project currently. And I, I suggest that um, we suspend this initiative. We can plan it uh, from a, a financial uh, standpoint, but until we have the boots on the ground expertise, we're gonna just make a mess of this project as well. Now you say you can't do anything until the bridge is made. I <laughs> respectfully disagree. Uh, we can build most of that trail by hand. It's gonna have to be built by hand anyhow. And uh, if we, we don't have this specialized contractor, maybe we can hire 
the Conservation Corps. There's a lot of options that we can uh, explore to build most of this project and get it going and uh, getting it underneath our feet uh, quickly. We, it just blows my mind the, uh, how irresponsibly money is being spent on this district for, uh, and, and at the same time, we're ignoring basic maintenance, basic needs like toilets, and we're, we're just not taking good care of our, our parks. We need an expert um, uh, manager to manage our, our park staff, period. Thank you. Okay, we will now move on to item number seven. Uh, item number seven is consideration for placement of picnic tables in the open space areas. In your packet, you will find a letter from uh, Director Case uh, regarding this. I'm sure you've all had time to review this letter. Uh, any opinions or comments from commissioners? Anybody? I'll just say I, I, I like the idea when Chris had talked many, many meetings ago about sort of brain, we talked about brainstorming about ways to just improve our open space or use our open space areas or make them more usable for the public. This was one of the things that had occurred to me too. Um, there are, um, I think Chris and I probably do some of the same hikes in the open space and there's a few spots that like have always struck me as sort of like, a natural place for a picnic bench um, uh, so um, or other lookout bench. So I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, I'd, I'd be curious to hear from staff if they have reservations, but um, but it seems like it could be a nice little resource. To, I, I'd be curious to hear from staff if they have reservations and I'd be curious to hear from John Campo if from the county's experience with its open space, the, like the sort of pros and cons of these things, because I do know some county open spaces that do have these in you know certain clearings with nice views and things like that so i'd be kind of curious to get here both from staff and from john as well as anyone else who has thoughts about it. John, what's, i can ahead. jump in i i just don't want to feel like i'm talking too much but i am um, so we we do have policies on this for the county but but i've worked in other places where the policies were different so this it's not uniform but i i'll share with you some of my experiences so working in san francisco open space we did have benches we didn't have tables but we had benches marin county open space we have a, our policy is no no built structures in open space so not only do we not have tables we don't even have benches. That's in open space. In parks, we do have benches and tables. Um, I mean, I like my personal opinion on some of this is that I could I could see I could see if I could see benches. Uh, a table I have a little more trouble with, um, but because that's not as common, um, and it could be. Uh, an attractive nuisance. I mean, you know, even in Chris's letter, he writes about that, that uh, trash or whatnot. I mean, that's, that is real. That is, that would definitely happen. You will have, you will likely have a, an area around the table or bench with broken glass, cigarette butts and trash. And so I think then the question goes to staff is that will be one more thing they have to maintain. Um, is that maintenance worth it or a high enough value for our community. I, you know, maybe there's an opportunity to try it as a pilot and see how it goes. Um, and, and in my opinion, it would be a bench, not a table, um, in a very strategic location, location that was easy to maintain. But there's not, there's, there's not a uniform, this is how it's done. It's, it's really up to the community. I guess my comment would be that uh, in my work history, open space was always, you leave it as, as pristine as an, and untouched as you can. So it's open space for future generations. Um, 
my concern of a, a table is it kind of creates a, a place to gather. And, you know, if you, you know, have a place to gather and then there's underage drinking and smoking, especially smoking in a, you know, an open space area is, is could be quite hazardous. Uh, the, the point to distinguish between a, a bench and a table, I think is, is, is important. Uh, you know, a, a table to me is, you know, everyone can gather around the table, a bench, you know, a couple, a couple people can sit down. So if we were to do something, I would then lean towards just a bench. I don't, um, I, I, I don't think I would support a table. That's, um, Michael, Kathleen, anything else? Yeah, I, I agree that um, benches definitely make more sense. And I, I, I went on a hike around Queen on Queenstown before this, just to kind of look at what things would look like. And, you know, there aren't really spaces for like a huge footprint um, in some, like it's, it's more like you can just have like, you know, something on the side of the trail at a viewpoint. Um, but yeah, it was hard to picture a full like picnic table along the trail. Um, but yeah, I, I personally love, you know, when I'm on a hike and there's a wonderful viewpoint and there's a, a bench that kind of like blends into the scenery a little bit and you can hang out on it. Um, and enjoy the view. Um, so I'd definitely be supportive of at least trying it out if it's feasible and like able to be maintained. Um, so yeah. And any thoughts? You're, you're muted. Um, I can see it, you know, both ways. It's really lovely to have something out in the open space. And I also like the idea of the open space just being the open space. And a lot of this is, is new information. I, ha I, ha I haven't really thought about these things before. So I think I'm, I'm kind of neutral. I could go either direction on it. And then I think the impact of staff is also important if, you know, they've got enough to do in the developed areas without sending a couple guys in the truck up the hill somewhere or something. And so I think that's a consideration as well. Yeah, I mean, John, I'd echo that and say, if we did put a bench up, say halfway up Queenstone, there would, there would absolutely be the expectation that that bench was maintained in the surrounding area was maintained. So if that was a place that, you know, I like to go hike and it, it's great at, in the first couple months and then all of a sudden it starts to get, become an attractive nuisance and broken glass and cigarette butts. And I, my expectation is that would be cleaned up. And that, I think that's probably my biggest concern is just leveraging one more thing for Luke and his crew to take care of. and. I mean, I'd be curious, Luke, do you imagine that to be a hardship? Do you imagine that's something you could take on? Like, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, thanks, John. Um, thanks, everyone. I, um, yeah, I mean, putting a bench up is definitely doable. The, the maintenance would definitely take staff away from other things. Um, and, you know, we, we with, with a staff of three, um, it is a challenge to maintain the things that we do maintain um, in, in our parks, in the building, the pool, um, and the, the few trails that, that are officially part of our purview. Um, sending staff up Queenstone uh, does take a lot of time, and that is a chunk of the day. And, um, and I think that uh, that would, you know, it, it is, is absolutely doable, but it, but it would be at the expense of other of other maintenance and projects and that would slow other things down for sure. Um, I was just up uh, camping at Angel Island a um, couple weekends ago, uh, which was lovely. And we, we did a hike up to the to the peak up at Mount Livermore up at the top of Angel Island. And um, there's a, a, a little picnic table at the very top there is like a cement pad and a picnic table with with some fencing around it. 
And, um, and I was <laughs> displeased when I got up there with my, my family and some friends and we, we hiked up to the top. The picnic table was, was broken and splintered all over the, the pad. The fence was broken, which left a total hazard for, for people standing up there taking pictures. Um, there was an electrical box that had been pulled out and there were wires strewn about that I, I didn't know if were, were what, uh, live or not. And, and I was thinking about that. I was thinking like, oh, this is definitely something that, that is not getting maintained. Um, and I was disappointed in that. But if that had just been a natural peak with no infrastructure at all, I would have had uh, no complaints at all about about that. But the fact that there was infrastructure there and that it was in disrepair, and maybe that had been from the previous day or something, who knows? But it was like, oh, this department's not keeping up on this, and so um, that made me, you know, that was relevant to me in thinking that uh, whatever we do put up there, the, there is the expectation that it's going to be in pristine condition, and um, and that will uh, that will be a chunk out of our uh, maintenance. Um, time, you know, uh, each week or month, whatever it ends up being. But we even, I definitely could try it out. But I think um, building a, putting a bench in, installing a permanent bench is not, um, doesn't necessarily a, a temporary thing. So I'm not sure what, what trying that out looks like, but I'd be, I'd be open to, to direction from, uh, from the commission on that. Well, I was just noticing this is not an approval item. It's just a discussion. I, right. we're, we're not going to make any decisions tonight. Yeah, and I, this is this is where I struggle a little with the commission. This my role in this commission, whereas I don't I don't know your priorities, all that you do, Luke, and it's hard for me to say this is a high enough priority where you should do this and then not do X, Y, and Z because you're now doing this. I. This is where I, I don't know. I feel like I, I lean to your guidance. Well, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. I mean, I, I would, um, you know, with the with the risk of of um, sounding resistant to adding new, you know, features to our our parks and open space, but um, I, you know, I I resist this. This would be something that I'd say, you know, we with our staff of three, this is not something I look to take on at this time. Um, if, if I was directed to do so by the board, we would, you know, do our best and, and, and try our best at that. But um, uh, we are trying our best to keep up the facilities that we do have um, with a very reduced staff from what was previously there. And so um, I'm not eager to, to add uh, benches or picnic tables in the open space that weren't previously there. I, I have a couple of thoughts, if you'll allow. Um, I, I fully support what Luke's, you know, kind of notion is that every added task is an opportunity cost, um, taking away time from them doing other things. I mean, our guys aren't sitting around and twiddling their thumbs. They don't have extra time in their days. Uh, these are hourly employees. They, you know, they, they work an eight hour day, um, you know, getting to the top of Queenstone and back, even with a UTV, which is pretty nimble, you know, that's an hour round trip, not to mention whatever work needs to be done while you're up there so there's an hour in a day in its own right and that's you know for one bench if you're going to multiple spots which we don't really have multiple spots in our open space i think that would be accessible for such a thing um i i understand john campo's concerns with it becomes an attractive nuisance i mean we've had issues with you know people building unauthorized things in the open space that we've had tree houses that get built out there that maybe are for all the right intentions of you know a dad and his two boys who live somewhere that borders out there and they build this nice tree house and it eventually gets discovered and then we eventually start getting complaints from other neighbors that hey you know kids or teens are gathering up there at night uh, they're playing loud music they're leaving trash everywhere this is an an absolute experience that we have had and actually have had recently and then have had to go up and disassemble these tree houses and bring everything down out of the open space which is no easy task and actually in one weird way makes me admire whoever it was that hauled all of this stuff up to there by hand to get this thing built the way that they built it some of these are pretty extravagant uh obviously you know built by carpenter tools not just the old days and throw some sticks across a big branch uh uh, so I, that's, that is the unfortunate 
reality of the situation. I, you know, that absolutely occurs. I think a bench, I would be curious, um, you know, we haven't really dug into this, but you know, what kind of bench, what's the aesthetic of the bench? What's the, uh, the kind of installation and the mounting of this? Is this something where we're digging into the ground and pouring cement uh, to secure the bench? You would not want something that could be easily moved. Um, otherwise, again, kids are going to find it. And next thing you know, you're going to find it a hundred yards down the hill um, because that's what kids do. I'm not, I, I was a kid. I get it. You know, I just, that's what happens or it becomes a popular after hour spot for them to hike out to and gather. And they're loud and don't understand that you can pretty much hear their conversations word for word, because that just trickles right down into the Valley. And, uh, uh, you know, so I think there are concerns if I'm looking at this from the other side, I also understand what could be the appeal uh, to it and kind of an idyllic setting of having kind of a natural rustic bench and some very specific outlies. If I'm looking at this from, you know, a fire perspective side, you know, that whole area is a massive fire hazard. And are you inviting, you know, kind of the wrong things up there? Or is this something that, you know, when the fire rolls through, it's going to get burnt up as well. So the permanency and how you secure the bench to certain locations would be things I think we would need to iron out. Um, let alone tables, because, uh, you know, without the use of concrete or, you know, I, I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't recommend, I know there's that, and it's been there for a very long time, that kind of old cement bench that's about a quarter of the way out Blackstone Canyon. I, I personally don't think something like that is necessarily appropriate for what we're talking about, um, which again means you need some level of installation and to be able to secure it into the ground. Um, you know, so I, I kind of side with Anne a little bit. I, you know, I, I can see both sides of this. I do think it attracts uh, nuisance, I think is a good word. Um, I think that's just the reality of the situation. Word gets out, hey, you know, let's all meet at the bench uh, out Queenstone at uh, 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday. And that's going to be the reality of the situation, at which point, you know, Rangers are going to have to get involved to go out there and break that up. Um, and I would also be curious, what's the greater um, community thoughts on it? Um, you know, I, right now we have opinions of the commission that we've heard. Uh, you've got an opinion of one director, uh, uh, but I would I'd want to push this out a little bit better and try to solicit, you know, thoughts, concerns, pros, cons from a greater level of the community. Uh, I think especially those that are kind of closer to these areas or these areas are right above their homes uh, would be valuable feedback that we should receive before we just start plopping benches out there as well. So um, that's my two cents. I'm not saying I oppose it. I'm not saying I'm for it. I'm saying I have concerns, but I can see the appeal of it as well. <laughs> but Eric, I, I would just add, if, if you did seek public input, th they would have to understand that it's not free, that we would, lose, some, we would lose something. We would, and like, and it's time. And yep. so, because I can imagine if, you know, Warren County Parks, like asked a hundred people, most people would probably say yes, not understanding what it means to staff time, um, impacts to the site, maintenance, you know, all of that. And mm -hmm. so I think that's where we have to temper expectations a little bit of what we can deliver and what we can't deliver. I, I think those are points well made and taken, um, John, and you're right. And that's a challenging thing to communicate because I think people just think, oh, well, they have the time, they can go up there and do it. And they don't, I mean, these guys are working hard from the moment they show up to the moment they leave, taking a 30 minute lunch break in the middle, in the middle uh, of everything. So it's uh, it, it, every, and I don't say this just about the parks, about all of our people here. And, and you know, despite what some people may say we are incredibly lean when it comes to our human resources and how we do things here and everything new that you take on presents an opportunity cost of okay if, if we're going to do this what are we not going to do that's the reason some of these other projects have not gotten started because we're waiting to finish projects that are currently in motion so that way there's bandwidth and capacity to work on the next project um, and we just we don't have that unless we want to start paying very expensive outside consultants to be getting involved in things as well um, which has never really been the district's forte on how to move forward on things either. Kathleen, did you want to weigh in at all? I don't think we got to hear, we got to hear from you. Not that I want to go against my director, one of, one of our directors. Um, I think Campo brings up a great point with the broken glass and 
the cigarette buds and the fear of fires um, and the trash. And then I think the other John um, brings up a great point of leaving our open space the way it is. Um, I am personally not a hiker. <laughs> So I wouldn't even know where to put the put the benches, but I would probably lean, if we were going to do anything, I would lean towards benches more than tables just because it's a less of an invitation or the worst of all evils. Um, but I also am very concerned as a board member, I'm very concerned with adding one more task to our staff because going back to discussions about even the trail that we were just talking about, one of the things of topic was the maintenance of it and what would we be adding to the staff should we build that trail? So, every, you know, if that's a concern, going up Queenstone and putting benches and or tables is definitely a concern to the staff and their time, so. But I would love, you know, thank you guys for all your input and, you know, your feedback. I, I, I greatly appreciate it. Can I, can I make one suggestion? So I, um, I, I, out of respect to Chris too, for who, you know, wasn't able to make this meeting, like, um, I guess I could just talk offline with him. I mean, I, um, there are certain, especially if we're just talking about a bench, there are certain places that are far enough up Queenstone that as somebody who grew up here as a high school and went through high school here, I think is like far enough that I actually don't know that it really would be an attractive nuisance. Um, and there are some very natural places with lookouts that like, and, and I take your example from Angel Allen Luke, but like, I can also think of a lot of other examples where there are these benches that um, in, in, I guess it wasn't county open space, maybe it was um, Golden Gate National Recreation Area or various things like that where they don't seem to have been defaced. Um, so I don't know, I, I hear that there's a pretty strong consensus here, but I guess I would, maybe I'll just talk offline with Chris and we can decide whether to like bring it back up for another um, conversation sometime. Cause, um, cause I, I do think it's worth um, a little more thought. I, I totally hear all the concerns. Um, and I think like if you put a picnic table out in Blackstone Canyon near that waterfall, like that would be an attractive nuisance and these would all be serious concerns. But as someone who does live near Queenstone and spends a lot of time up there, like there are places up there that I actually think putting a bench probably wouldn't, wouldn't actually raise a lot of the concerns that I'm hearing. So um, I'll follow up with Chris offline and um, maybe see if, you know, he thinks it's worth bringing it back and having a more narrowed conversation because his, his proposal looks like it was like 10 to 15 picnic tables, which I'm hearing a pretty strong consensus against, but maybe there's something more moderate that, um, we could bring back and, and talk a little more specific about specific areas and what it, the pros and cons would look like in those areas. Well, and I, I think, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was also going to say, I would also encourage, you know, whether you need Chris or not, I would encourage you to bring it back, you know, do a little bit more research and get a little bit more points on the trail of where you would want it and then bring it back to your commission as well. I mean, I know Chris is, per his verbiage, feel really strongly about tables, but part of you being here too is also your opinion and supporting. And like I said, I don't hike, so I don't have a view of one way or another, but if you guys know exactly where a great bench would be, you know, I think it's worth bringing up again for the discussion. I, I also, the only thing I would add too is uh uh, you know, having a firm understanding of where, where Marinwood property actually ends, um, because, you know, you go out Queenstone and you're to Ian's point, which I don't disagree with. Queenstone is not an accessible, you know, I mean, you know, you don't have to get too far out the road before you're going in really steep terrain and uh and you're everything not a keg. Uh, yeah right you know uh, and <laughs> you can't you know you don't have vehicles and things like that but you know as you get um before you even get to the intersection like where chicken shack fire road and everything you're no longer on district property um so you know keeping the if you're looking at what would be and i think kathleen actually made a really good suggestion of uh what are some of these spots let's identify some specific areas and then let's confirm that these areas are actually within marinwood you know is is our property is Marinwood CSD property um, because you know if you're looking at things beyond a certain point, 
it's irrelevant for us to have that conversation uh, here anyway, because we simply don't have the authority to say, yeah, let's put a bench there. Um, so just something else to keep in mind and kind of understanding where our property starts and stops. And it gets a little um, mixed up there. Um, and, uh, you know, I think um, I know the route from Queenstone, uh, but, you know, once you hit that kind of three-way intersection where you're either heading out Chicken Shack towards Big Rock or you're heading the other direction towards Ponte and, you know, that becomes other people's open space areas, uh, um, it gets a little bit tricky there too. I just have one more question um, about logistics for maintenance. Like, do we... How regularly do staff go up Queenstone? Um, like, would it be something that could be like tacked on to existing trips? Um, or would it have to be like a lot of brand new trips to go up? Uh, that's a good question, Michael. Yeah, so, um, I mean, we go up there probably every month to uh, month and a half, I guess, just ch checking things out. Um, but I, you know, a lot of that stuff in the open space, because we have so many residents that are up there weekly or multiple times a week, um, when there is a maintenance issue or, um, you know, there's something that's been dumped or something that a tree has fallen over the path, we do rely heavily on residents to let us know if there's like an issue. So if there was some vandalism or a, a problem or a, a accumulation of garbage in a, in a particular picnic bench or picnic table spot, um, along Queenstone, um, you know, we would see that, you know, every month or so, but the, uh, we would probably get a report. We've got a lot of people that, that have our contact that um, keep us in, in the loop that we would hear about it before that and we would, we would make a special trip for sure. Okay, anything else? A lot of good perspective here tonight, and you can kind of see both sides of it. If there's nothing else from commissioner staff or the board, I will ask for a public comment on the consideration for placement of picnic tables in the open space. Yeah, one second, please. Stephen. Great, I wanted to talk about this issue. In fact, I sent an email to uh, staff as well as John Campo uh, and Chris Case. I'm sorry I don't have all of your emails. Maybe I, I don't know if you opened up the email, but I there within the email was a link to a bench that I think would work ideally uh, in the open space. It's made out of two railroad ties. It's very simple, but these railroad ties are very uh, heavy, and so. It has the advantage of being movable, yet it's not a permanent bench. So there's no issues with uh, uh, no issues with it, it, it going anywhere. So um, I would invite staff to send this to you, but it's certainly something that can be done. If you need someone to build them, I will build them myself or with a team of people. Um, it will not cost a lot of money. Um, I do think that the comments of bench versus picnic table are good. I do think a picnic table is gonna attract more trash and, and people just kind of being sloppy. I think John Campo's point about needing to maintain it um, is relevant. Um, however, I, I dispute the idea that this is something that we should uh, uh, push back against. Uh, maybe we need to uh, hire more staff, but I do, I'm in favor of uh, doing better management of, of our open space. We have um, fire issues that we need to uh, monitor. Um, we have erosion issues. And some of you may recall, we had, uh, what was it? Uh, more than a couple times we've had uh, landslides that have resulted in uh, payments of upwards to three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. So we really need to do a better job of, of maintaining our uh, open space. Um, but the, really, the benefit is is that it's a recreation asset that we want we want uh, for the community. And so, 
I think there's a solution at hand and maybe you just have to open up your email to find out about it. Um, because this, this bench, it's attractive, it's rustic, it's, it's uh, uh, protected against the elements, it's recycled railroad ties, so it's environmentally friendly. And uh, yeah, let's, let's do it. We can, we can experiment. If we don't like the project, we just pull them out, but you're not pouring concrete. You're just basically uh, taking them off the trailer of, for the UTV and you're done with the installation. So thank you. Okay, uh, I guess we will now move on to item number eight. This is the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report. Uh, fortunately, again, Mr. Fretwell has included a list of what they've had going on the last month or so. Uh, Luke, you wanna highlight anything for us? Yeah, thanks, John. I'll uh, highlight a couple things on here and then take any questions at the end. Um, so one uh, thing that's coming up, we, we're in our last couple of weeks of the pool season. And I just wanted to give uh, a, just an acknowledgement of our, of our lifeguard and pool attendant uh, staff this fall um, for stepping up. We have we, uh, had our, the departure of our recreation supervisor overseeing the pool. And I kind of stepped, have been stepping in and Robin's been helping me um, just kind of get through the end of the pool season um, without John Paul down there coordinating everything. And uh, the guards and the pool attendants have been great and helping us uh, keep things staffed and, and get through the end of the season. It's we're the, one of the only outdoor pools still open at this point um, in the area. And um, it's been slowing down, but it's still been busy on the weekends and things are going really well. And we've got two more weeks. We close the season on October 7th and um, uh, everything's been going going well, but we're um, I'm looking forward to uh, you know, a little bit of a breather from from that area of responsibility. And um, we are currently recruiting for a new recreation supervisor and I will update the commission um, with any new developments on that front. Uh, we've got a couple events coming up in uh, October. We have our Halloween Harvest Festival um, taking place on October 14th and uh, our fall art show on the following week on October 22nd. And these are uh, two of our longstanding fall events that we're really excited about. Uh, last year, we uh, resumed our October Halloween Harvest Festival after um, it being canceled the previous year due to COVID. And uh, we kind of ran an outdoor version of the event last year that went really well. So we're going to attempt um, uh, kind of a repeat of that with a few tweaks, uh, weather permitting, and we're excited about that. So um, that'll be happening uh, next month. And then the Fall Art Show, uh, always a great event, and we're really looking forward to that. Susan Press has um, curated another amazing uh, show, I'm sure, with a bunch of uh, Marin's finest artists, and then um, we're really looking forward to another good art show. And then um, we continue to, some of our fall programs have been starting. Our uh, preschool, after school program are going strong, and we've been kind of um, new youth and adult programs are being kind of peppered in, and we've got some new programs starting uh, later this fall that we're excited about. On the parks maintenance activity report, um, just the staff have been doing a lot of work to uh, fortify the turf. One of our newest uh, staff members, Cesar uh, Aguilar, he comes from a golf course uh, maintenance background and, and he's brought a lot of knowledge and experience with uh, turf specifically. And we're trying out some of, his, um, some of his ideas on the turf and things are looking really good. And we're, we're really excited about uh, getting the turf kind of to a, a whole nother level. Uh, we've got a one area fenced off um, for a couple weeks, but we'll be opening that back up soon and things are uh, getting into um, a good state in that, in that sense. We're also um, looking at doing uh, some updates to a couple of our drinking fountains that are in disrepair. So um, look for that in the coming uh, weeks or, or months as we um, figure that out. And then um, we have a couple uh, other projects coming up at the pool. Once the pool season closes, there'll be some repairs uh, done to the to the plumbing some of the showers and sinks need a little bit of work down there uh, among some other projects so um that's all i want to really highlight but uh please let me know if there's anything that anyone wants to discuss or ask about um, either in the parks or rec department commissioners doing a good job luke thanks john 
Um, no other comments? Then again, uh, I'd ask for a public comment on uh, the maintenance activity report. Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to start with the rec uh, activity report. Thanks, Luke, for having uh, a great season this year and uh, looking forward to these events. Um, I do have a question, however. Um, you know, we talk about the uh, CSD um, uh, activities each month. We talk about um, our adult education courses, but you know that's not that's that's not uh, all of the community. When this this community uh, center, uh, when this community services district was formed, it was formed with the idea that it would serve the community. And what's the community? Well, the community is everybody. Probably the most important. Uh, recreation activity is dog walking in our park. Um, and I would like to see more uh, outreach. There's absolutely no indication of outreach to the community. I spoke um, about my frustration trying to simply get a place out of the rain uh, for my music group. There are lots of other groups. Most community centers have community rooms where where nonprofit or non for profit um, organizations can gather, whether it's a knitting club, a chess club, or you know, just some sort of informal activity. But the idea of the community center is uh, to provide uh, a resource for the community for meeting, and we're not seeing that. Um, this, I like the fact that we're taking care of some of these. Uh, uh maintenance issues that's fantastic um i would love to to hear some some longer term um uh, uh future future uh challenges that that you anticipate in the parks area um i've made some recommendations i haven't really received much response but um uh, you know, I, I, I honestly, I think you guys do a good job, but I, I do think that you could do a better job in terms of reaching the community. By the way, we've been talking about uh, getting the uh, uh, pickleball lines installed. And every time I, I bring this project up, Luke just says he's, he's thinking about it. Well, you know, there is a community out there and maybe we don't have a, uh, a, a, a contractor that's giving pickleball classes, but we do have a lot of uh, people that play pickleball. And why aren't we doing that sort of thing? Honestly, um, we're not doing enough for the community. I appreciate what is being done. And one final thing. I would love to see a Halloween parade as part of, or like a, a pa part of the pageantry uh, for the Harvest Festival, um, including adults, because it's it's awfully fun on on Quietwood Drive, and it would just be fun to see people during the daytimes to look at their costumes. Thanks. All right, that brings us to item number nine, and that is. Uh, Commissioner's uh, items of interest for future agenda items. It's getting late. Uh, the one thing I would I would bring up, um, and I actually uh, spoke with her uh, a little bit about this too, is, uh, uh, and I don't know that this is the uh, immediate next agenda. And when requests for future agenda items come up, it doesn't mean it's coming up on the very next agenda, but um, we will start to dive deeper into the place structure replacement project here coming up in future meetings. Um, I'll probably be leaning towards Ian, who uh, a little bit who's offered to kind of help uh, uh, dissect and uh, summarize some of the uh, statistical data that we got through the surveys and so this project uh, will certainly be picking back up I don't know exactly when we'll get this on an agenda but I, I do know that the Commission will certainly play a role as we are getting into this project and uh, 
and working towards developing a, a design build type RFP for this. Sounds good. Anything else? This is Ian. I, I just would reiterate that and I get, totally understood that that won't be necessarily on the next agenda, but I would love to talk more about the bathroom situation at some point down the line. I have one request. Should we put on the um, tables back on so Chris can have his discussion or Ian, do you want to touch base with him and do it at a later date? Yeah, let me just, I'll just touch base with Chris and kind of compare notes and see if, you know, we're thinking of the same spots and what he thinks about a bench versus a table. And uh, we'll just, I'll, we'll come, I'll come back to Eric and once I've had a chance to just uh, debrief with Chris a little bit. Okay. And uh, you'll volunteer that we'll give you a litter stick and a bag and you'll take that with you up the hill. <laughs> Okay, can I ask one more question? Just one. Okay, to change this to bi monthly meetings, it's already done, right? So then it just comes back to us and then we approve it from the board level. It'll be on the next board agenda. So, okay. assuming, you know, uh, I certainly can't speak for the board, nor am I going to predict what direction they'll go with this. Um, right. But, uh, you know, it would be, if they approve it, it would be effective immediately. Um, which uh, next month is a even month anyway. So we would be um, actually no, because we would only be meeting in a, in odd months. Odd months. Sorry. So it could potentially push. I will I will uh, ping the commission with the results of that vote, and then they can uh, I'll work with John to see if um, an October meeting is is uh, called for. If we just want to push to November. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. But first things first. Let's put it on the board agenda and go from there. Yeah, and I would encourage um, if anybody has time during the board meeting and would like to speak to it, uh, I'm sure Kathleen uh, will do a, a good job of expressing the thoughts of the commission. But if any of the commissioners nope. want to attend the board meeting, uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit later on in the meeting, but uh, you're always, always welcome to attend and add comment at the board meetings as well. If nothing else from commissioner staff, we would, uh, I'd ask for public comment on future agenda items. One second. Steven. So uh, when you, we opened the meeting, I brought up a couple of issues. Uh, one, you know, who's really setting the agenda? Because honestly, uh, uh, you know, the fact that we're not talking about the bathroom tonight, um, you know, that I don't know if it was an oversight in intention, um, but I, I don't think it's ex uh, acceptable to uh, just go against what the board has requested. Um, anyhow, uh, the other thing, uh, the other issue that I brought up was the problem with alcohol in our parks. Now, it is expressly illegal uh, I don't, John Campo might uh, know what the policy is for uh, Marin County parks, but I don't believe they allow alcohol there except under strict permitting issues. And we have a runaway problem in the district. And, and I think one of the, the issues is, is, first of all, we like these guys. These guys are our neighbors. It's just that they're acting inappropriately. It's basically... Um, a frat party where there's no host responsible uh, to close it down and get people out of the, the area. It's just, it's out of control. And I, I I'm strongly think that we should not be allowing any kind of alcohol consumption in the park. Um, uh, but we need to uh, discuss how we can maintain what is a, a very nice uh, gathering of, of guys. Uh, they're currently gathering around a, a decrepit horseshoe pit. I would like to see um, a better area with more games and fun stuff to do. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's worth discussing because I think 
in closing down the alcohol, um, which is part of the social uh, lubricant. If we had more games there, maybe we can keep everybody happy, including the wives that have to deal with their husbands who's had too much to drink on a Friday night. So um, I, I do think this is worthy of discussion. Um, and it's unfortunately two months from now is not, not the time to do it. It's to do it right away. There's an uh, event called Sober October. Let's have a Sober October in our parks. I trust our staff will keep you informed on the developments here, but currently the Sheriff's Department has been informed. And so I don't wanna see it get, go ugly, I, I, but it may get ugly and um, it will. So let's, let's think of positive solutions and act on, on them. Thank you. Okay, um, I think staff is, will be attending to those issues, whether we talk about them tonight or next month or not. Um, item number 10 is adjourned. Does anybody have anything else to say? Shake your head no. Thank you very much. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Campo and fine, thank you. They, all in favor? They've been my second, my first and second all night. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make it an easy copy paste when I write the meetings. <laughs> the minutes. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all have a nice evening. Thank you. Turn off the recording. Bye. Bye now. <laughs>